introduce to you my special guest tonight. He's got a long list of accomplishments, so let me start from the top. He is a two-time Florida heavyweight champion, a one-time Southern heavyweight champion, a two-time Florida tag team champion, NWA World Junior heavyweight champion, Street, I don't know 
hundred people in three summers. The only three people that made it through that grueling, grueling time was the first one was Mr. Wonderful Paul Warner. Anybody heard of Mr. Wonderful Paul Warner? And the second one was Hulk Hogan. Remember Hulk Hogan? He had his first match with me after I had been working for about four weeks. But my first introduction to wrestling was in Jacksonville. So, Eddie Graham, um, I know I'm getting ready to start pretty soon. I'm, I'm excited about getting ready to start pretty soon. I mean, they're teaching me a headlock and I'm learning all this other stuff besides amateur wrestling. And uh, so, uh, Eddie Graham says, How would you like to referee, Brandon? Brian? <laughs> and I said, I'd love to. And uh, so I asked him, How do you do it? He said, it's just like yeah, I'm trying to say, when your shoulders are down, you count to three. Where are the other roads, Mr. Graham? Please, Mr. Graham. I don't want to embarrass myself. Well, the guys I was working with was, uh, you remember Macho Man? Uh, and and uh, Manny Poffo. Well, his dad was Angelo Poffo, and I was seeing him in you know, one of his last matches, I'm sure. And then his opponent on the other side was a guy named uh, Paul Vachon. There was Coach and Paul and Sean, big, big, big uh, stars in the Minnesota area. So anyway, I come out to referee and I'm listening to Mr. Graham, all the instructions he gave me at here. And uh, uh, I don't know who's going to win, who's going to lose, I'm just going to count the shoulders up. So match comes, boom, 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 all of a sudden, somebody's got their shoulders on. One, two, three. I count their shoulders down. All of a sudden, they pop up. I go to raise their hand, he shoots his hand down, both the guys got it in my face. They have me backed up into the corner, and I'm going, you know, I'm so sorry, they were intimidating the heck out of me, because, you know, there's these big guys, and I respect the heck out of them, and I could probably beat them up at that time, but I didn't put it over. So I said, I'm about ready to cry, and I want to run, and I don't know what to do. And who comes out to say it? Don Curtis. Yep. Don Curtis comes out, because the whole thing was set up as a rib, and I didn't know about anything about it. Anything about it. Of course, they're all laughing in the back, and uh, that's kind of how our business is. It's not about ribs and stuff. But uh, Don came out, and he's such a classy guy. He held me on my back. He said, hey, Mr. Curtis, you're going to get fired. Oh, no, I don't know. I'll talk to you before you come on. And anyway, it's just a rib, and uh, Don Curtis was so wonderful. And to be here for the Don Curtis Cup is just amazing. To know the talent that's here is just amazing. To know the respect. Well, Don and Donnie Curtis, God bless Donnie. Where are you, Donnie? I know you're out there somewhere, and I hope you get well soon. You get better. Donnie Curtis, Don's wife, is a wonderful lady. So, keep Don, Donnie and Curtis, she's going through a little bit of time, but she's a wonderful lady. So, she's going to smile at this because we do this thing called Legends Lunch now. It's been going on for 16 years. So, very quickly, I want to tell you a quick story. Um, um, where am I at? Eight minutes. So, I have to. Okay, so um, everything in life is a rib in wrestling. You know, it's like you're living a rib, you're drinking beer when you should have been drinking beer, and doing things you probably should have been doing. God protect you. Thank you, Lord. And uh, so I'm on my way um, to, uh, <laughs> to uh, West Palm Beach, and Steve Kern and Joe Briscoe, I fall asleep in the back, so they move the clock up and out. Okay, I fall asleep in the back. This is my first match. Okay, uh, anyway, this, all of a sudden we're getting close to uh, West Palm Beach to the auditorium. He said, Brian, 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 get your clothes on. You your first match. We're already late. Oh my God, I'm going to get fired again. I just almost got fired last night in Jacksonville. Oh God, so the way I get all my clothes on, Pat Patterson gave me this big purple silver jacket. And I run out to the ring. I mean, I run underneath all are upstairs there and they all wait at all the wrestlers are there about an hour and a half before. So we run in and um, I go to open the door and the door will open. So all those people were up there they were laughing at me pretty hard and so were the guys. So on the way back, uh, Pat Patterson, uh, the great Mephisto of Louis Dondero have a booting and got metal. And he passes up um, and Louis Dondero is winning us on the moon roof. So uh, they're going to start Brian, you can't rib him like that, you gotta quit rib him. And Don Curtis loved me and told the story to him, that's what I'm telling you. So, uh, 
So uh, I said, well, what can I do? What can I do with Pat Patterson? What can I do with the fiscal? I mean, Pat's always messing with me and telling me he's going to go in the ring and do go behind his own. It's a different story. And uh, they said, I know. We can take like we're going to the bathroom. I'll pass You can jump in the trunk, put your pants down. We'll get you ready to move back. So I said, uh, I know this one. So I'll keep it with you. <laughs> so I jump in the trunk and uh, he passes up. All of a sudden, I feel the car stop. Um, uh, I said, what's going on, guys? And then he asked me, can I breathe? Can I breathe? Yeah, I can breathe. Okay, we we'll get to eat hard junk. You know, this is at night. Remember, after the matches, uh, they already ripped me once. So all of a sudden, we get to, get to the, there's a toll plaza. And so that's where they said, as soon as they get behind us, it's about 11 o'clock at night, um, we'll pop that trunk and you move. I said, oh, that's great. I'm going to get it. This is going to be good. So after they talk, we stop, we jump up, but boom. All of a sudden, okay, get ready. Explicit adjectives. Um, <laughs> so I hear that one, two, three, boom! Oh, in the back, so good. Oh, I'm shaking it up. I'm in that trunk. And it's like my ankles are terrible. And uh, I turn around to see him laughing at me while they had backed up into the picture window of Sucky's restaurant. And, the, and Jack starts laying on the horn. Thank you, Jacksonville. 